Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I want to talk about a slightly different topic, slightly different video format here. I pulled several articles to address. These articles pertain to cancer and recent studies are discussing emotions that are playing a role in cancer growth. In particularly, repressed anger or anger that is not expressed by an individual. This seems to be a very common issue reported among stage 4 cancer patients. So t let's take a closer look at this as I believe it to be a major cause and factor in my personal experience with stage 4 cancer. Okay, first let me say this. I, I do not regret having cancer, nor do I see cancer as a negative or a bad thing. The experience opened a spiritual side of me that probably would have not been possible without that suffering. And what I mean by that is this, ex this experience was so profound that only my higher self could have planned such an experience. I see cancer as a tool used in life to assist in each and many individuals' plan of exit, even perhaps way before physical birth. These articles are for your review. I highlight articles for my research into this topic and post the links under the video in the description box. As you can see by this research, there is probable cause and a common feature in people with cancer. That is, the repressed anger. Anger that isn't allowed to vent properly or be dealt with, so it is ignored until a buildup occurs where eventually that individual breaks and a rage that no one comprehends takes place from a buildup of repressed emotions. These emotions are very strong and like a poison to the body. People who are most vulnerable to cancer are those who have a difficult time controlling their emotions. So in general, they will appear motionless as the emotions will remain bottled up and not expressed, as many would expect one to express them, but rather tends to be a violent outburst at times with pinned up emotions. 95% of the time, the individual will seem very calm and laid back since the emotions are suppressed. The mind results in a depression state. And without proper methods to address the emotional distress, in our subconscious mind, a sense of hopelessness abounds and stress builds. This stress tension causes many pains throughout the body and a feeling of being constantly attacked is a good way to describe a maniac depressional state of mind. The mania is an obsession with not allowing self-emotional release. If one never cries, then one never really knows self. Sometimes an emotional release demands one to feel oneself, to feel the suffering and pain, to feel loss and death. These are just as important to accept and deal with as is our joys in life that we delight in. Look, it's winter here where I am, writing this to be recorded. This time of the year, we reflect on our lives as we enter the dark nights of our soul. And yes, it's true that more people choose to exit this world at this time of the year than any other time. We ultimately use the energy of this particular time to go inward and self-reflect. Now look into the mirror of yourself and ask yourself this. Do I see myself in the mirror? Is this who I am? Or am I seeing God looking back? Ask yourself that important question. For there is only one playing all the roles in this play we call life. So yes, anger is important. But as the Bible says, Be angry, but sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil or doubt, also known as disbelief. That's Ephesians. Now this is very important to understand. To sin is to make a mistake. Or we could say being ignorant and lacking knowing or understanding. So we are all sinning because we don't know who we are. So we die in our sin of not knowing and that is the greatest mistake we make. But it can be corrected. Now unrighteous just means wrongful thinking and a righteous means 
rightful thinking or correctful thinking. So you see, if we go to sleep and we are still angry, then that emotion will couple with the fear we are imagining, and that fear will want to become manifested as a desire. It doesn't matter if it is a good desire or bad desire. This will cause events to manifest in reality that wouldn't otherwise. Anger is a very strong emotion. If you remember the earlier video I did on the Sabbath, you can begin to understand why sleep is so very important. Here we are in two worlds, and most don't even realize it. We live in a physical body during our waking hours, but the other half is spent in sleep in the spirit. The spirit world we also occupy in thoughts and in dreams. Now, if we enter that world angry and have nightmares, those fears in the dream will want to come into our reality. Remember, this all starts with fear. That fear emotion is taken over by the emotion we call anger. But anger is just fear amplified. It's still the base emotion of fear. When anger is sufficiently amplified, then, then it becomes hate. Hate is the emotional state of complete disbelief. Disbelief in oneself and even the world as a whole. Thus, suffering and death ensues. It always follows hate as it is the fruit bore from the tree of hate. This tree bears the fruit we call suffering and death. So here is a key for death and hell. The key to open death is fear. Fear builds and becomes anger. Anger amplifies and it becomes hate. And that leads to all suffering. However, the other option to choose is far more difficult and takes patience. And of course, that is love. We can choose to think on things that cause us great fear and amplify these thoughts into reality just the same way we can control our thoughts and only focus on love instead of fear. This is a filter process for our thoughts. And if you persist in the assumption, the assumption has to come to pass. The imagination will help you, but you must persist in the assumption that I am that I am, whatever that be, for the good or for the bad. If you persist, it will be just as you desire. This is important to understand. For me, it was cigarettes. I was told if I keep smoking, I would get cancer. After 20 years of smoking, I started to fear cancer, and fear grew and so many other things that came to pass as a result of fear. I slept in anger, and I created everything I didn't want to create. Or so I thought. But those were my desires. And anger is a poison to drink if one needs the lessons on anger, as I chose before birth, these lessons. So never forget you're here to have an emotional experience as a creator. Love your creation. If you hate it, destroy it and rebuild it. Persist in the assumption that you are what you want to be. If not in this life, you will in the one to come. Until you experience everything your heart desires, just persist in the assumption and it will be yours to experience. This is the power of Christ in you. So there's a lot more to this subject, and I'd like to add a link under the video in the descriptions for a video in particular on Brian Scott's channel dealing with a channeling from Quo, who is a gathering of high-density beings who are channeled by LL Research, Light and Love Research Group. And they can be found at llresearch.org for more information on their group. I find this channeling very fascinating and worth watching. 
So for more information on what they have to say about disease and cancer pertaining to a lot of the similar same things that that I've stated here that I've found through my personal experience, they're going into more detail. And I think it's an excellent idea to delve a little deeper into this research if it interests you. And this video in particular is definitely worth watching. So thank you for your time and enjoy.